Alright, hello and welcome back to Katawa Shoujo. Uh, don't really remember where we were, but I think we just woke up and gone to the track. Uh, not too sure why, but I don't really remember why, but who cares? Don't exactly remember the point we're up to, but this time I just decided to grab a drink while I record this. Should help anyway. Alright, where to start? Well, we start with the reading, no way. <clears throat> uh, the summertime is something to be savored, but when combined with the clean country air, it's all the better. The track and field club members are horsing around on the field ahead, some are playing with the soccer ball, others are talking, and a few are laughing as two of them mock fight with each other. None of them pay any pay me any heed as I sit alone on the grass, underneath the shade of a particularly large tree, it's a nice and peaceful moment after a dreary day of schoolwork. I played soccer plenty often before my heart attack, so I had thought it would be really nostalgic to watch them, but I f what I'm feeling now though is quite distinct from that emotion. I hear footsteps approaching me from behind and I turn to my side to see one of the classmates taking a seat beside me. I'm taken off guard as the two of us haven't talked much before and I don't think anyone would notice me here. Sup. Hi, Mira. Mira, I can't say that name. Just call me Miki. Surnames are too stuffy. Likewise, then. We both look back out to the field where the guys are playing. It looks like they're really getting ready to have a second game with the people spreading out to their positions and the ball being carried to the center of the field. Surely enough, the whistle is blown to begin the match and they get right back into it. Not going to play? Nah, I just feel like resting a bit. What about you? You kind of look like you wanted to play when you were watching us before. So someone did notice me after all. It's kind of a long story. A face that you know, I've piqued their interest. Uh, I'm in Yamaka because of a heart condition. I can't really play soccer anymore. Wanted to play, be a soccer player, did you? No, I really only did it for fun. My friends played it, so I played it as well. Any of those guys playing around could have been me before my accident, but I didn't really feel like I have a real wish to get back to that either. It's mm, a little hard to explain. I'm still decently physically built for the <laughs> from the days I played soccer, even if my strengths largely left me by now. I've got on well with the other club members. When I think about it, I should feel pretty bad watching people play when I can't anymore, yet I don't. Maybe it's a good thing, a sign that, I, a sign that I've gotten over it and that I'm ready to become a new person. Sorry, I'm kind of rambling. It's cool, I'm actually glad to hear it. It sounds like you really have your stuff together. Some of the people that come to Yamaka are pretty messed up at first. So you're a member of the track and field club then? Yep been in it since I first arrived. Don't suppose you're friends with Emmy? Short, fast runner, no legs. I don't think there are all that many female track mem track and field members. <laughs> Emmy, everyone knows her, don't they? But no, I tend to get on better with boys, so Emmy and uh, so me and Emmy don't really talk much. Anyway, what about you? Uh, well, I'm not really in any clubs, real clubs anyway. You've been hanging around with Hanako and the blonde <laughs> Amazon though, right? Blonde Amazon. I suppose Lily was the height to fit that description. If nothing else, I nod in response without making too fine a point of things. Mm, then don't worry about it as long as we've got some friends. As long as you've got some friends, you don't need to join a club. A loud whistle f whistling from the field attracts our attention. One of the players is on the ground, clutching his leg, and the other stop to play. Others stop play to jog up to him, leaving Mickey grimacing. Ouch, that looks painful. The guy really has bad luck. As she continues to look out onto the field, I can't help being reminded of her own injuries. Her right arm, ending at a stump rather than a hand, has been bandaged up for the entire time I've been in Yamako. Her injury doesn't seem that new. She turns to talk to me again and catches me looking. Both of us sit in awkward silence as she takes her bandaged arm and holds it in her lap with her remaining hand. Sorry, I guess it's still a bit... It's fine, really. 
Her tone is light, but neither of us say anything afterwards. Every disabled student has their own way of dealing with their problems, and some finding their condition troublesome is uh, only natural. I'm included among them, after all. The injured guy with, from the soccer game manages to get to his feet with some help, and ends up hobbling off the field with one arm over the shoulder of another for support. Probably just pulled a muscle if he managed to walk. The whistle blows again, and the game continues once with the less, with one less man on the field. Hanging out with Hanako and that blonde girl, you keep some pretty strange company. How so? It's just that Hanako is kind of, I don't know, shy? No, not really that, it's just she's got some issues, I think. I can't really put it in a nice way. Not that I don't think she's a nice person, though. She's perfectly nice. It's just hard to deal with. It sounds like Miki, or at least some other people in the class, have tried to get close closer to Hanako in the past, and didn't go so well. I think her judgement is rather harsh, given that everyone, not just in... not those just... there, Not just those in Yamako have their own issues. Then again, I don't... haven't known Hanako for that long, so I wouldn't surprise me if there was some stuff I didn't know about. I'll just have to take it as it comes. She is a nice person, I don't think she'll... I'll just take it as... It, yeah. I think she should... I think that should be all that matters. Miki's eyes narrow a little and her smile spreads. You really like her, don't you? Miki certainly... doesn't mince words. To be completely honest, yeah I do. I'd appreciate it if you didn't tell anyone. Hey, well, you can trust me. No problems there. To be honest, I think it's kind of cute. If you really want to go for it, don't let me stop you. Thanks. She may say that, but she ju she was just talking about Hanako having issues. Still, I want to... I still, I want to hold myself to the words I said. Hanako's problems don't matter. I'll deal with them many. Deal with anything that comes up because I want to help her. If there's even the smallest possibility that I can pull Hanako out of her depression and seclusion, then I should work towards that no matter what. If she needs a prince, then I can be that prince. As I think about the, uh, the possibility of relationship, I can see Miki grinning at me while watching my face. I'm no doubt blushing and looking away from her only makes her laugh. Miki gives off a di different vibe from the other girls. Talking to her feels more like talking to a guy than a woman. Her saying she prefers male company doesn't help that dispel that notion neither. Glancing at my watch shows that lunch break is ending in a few minutes. Time to start heading back to class. Lunch is about to end. Want to head back? Yeah, we'd better. I pick myself up the grass and dust myself off, offering a hand to Miki to help her up as well. She takes it and easily pulls herself up, showing the muscles moving in her toned bare, toned bare arms in the process. Come to think of it, weren't you wearing the no why aren't you wearing the normal school girl's blouse? Uh, it's too hot and constricting. The boy's uniform is better anyway. She throws her arms around in a, a bit to emphasize her point, which is the side effect of showing off her one particular part of her body that would be especially constricted by the blouse. The two of us start walking back to the main building through the gardens, talking as we go. It sure it sounds like you're settling in well. That's a relief. It was pretty surprising to get a transfer student at this point of the year considering the exams are coming up. Don't remind me. Haha, uh, don't worry about it. Just cram it and you'll be fine. That doesn't sound like good advice. She slaps her shoulder a couple times as she grins. I don't think she takes school very seriously. You seem like a smart guy and Mattel... Mattel's taking to you well already and you are like a hand in a glove. Now to work out whether that's a good thing or a bad thing. I still don't know what to make of this school, and I've been here. Uh, I've only been here a few weeks, and I still feel dazed at times. You'll get used to it. Just give it some time. It's only a high school, just like any other. She makes it sound so simple, but I've never thought about it that way. To me, Yamako symbolizes the marked shift in my life. I was no longer normal. I was different and I was to be educated with other different people. And yet I'm walking back to class, talking casually with a classmate during lunch, 
after watching some others play so game of soccer, all perfectly normal, maybe she has a point. Maybe I should just look at Hanako in the same way, everyone has their own issues. This is hardly something unique to Yamako. After all, it's only a high school, just like any other. As we walk, continue to talk, I find myself smiling. Miki and I are very different people in almost every way, but it feels good to have gotten to know another classmate a bit. <sighs> and I take that moment of passing to take a drink. A light breeze blows the scent of early summer around my head while I wait for Lily. <laughs> 